Assalamu alaikum everyone. I hope you guys are doing amazing. This week's episode is honestly another really really random one. I feel like this is like the most different EP that I'm having as of yet because a lot of my episodes revolve around Islam and this one probably will as well. But I wanted to talk about like the some of the things that I've been noticing and just feeling and just generally in other people's lives as well when it comes to like decision making and like having immigrant parents and chasing your dreams and etc 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 and all that in the third because I feel like it is such an over talked about topic where people talk about like oh you know having immigrant parents and there's so much of a struggle and being the firstborn is so hard and having to pave the way and do this and do that is hard yes that's all true and I'm not denying that but I feel like there's so many people that have already talked about it what I want to talk about personally is decision making and like just stuff around that niche of just like living your life and doing things that make you happy and that guilt that you might feel from your parents or from you know your family around you and just like that sense of that sense of validation that you kind of get from your family that it's like if they're all like we're all on the same page and it's okay and that I can't branch off and do what I want I can't branch off and chase my dreams I have to let go of opportunities because my family's like this or this is happening right now at home like I just I, that whole niche of stuff and I'm gonna get more into it if you don't get me but I think the people that are getting it they're getting it with all things a preface like always I feel like universally we can all agree they're like, you know, your family has worked incredibly hard to be here. Nobody's downplaying the struggles of a first generation kid. No one is, you know, looking down on that. No one is invalidating those experiences. And we all know that the decisions and the things that our parents say and do is out of love and out of care. And it's usually because they have not experienced, you know, a type of lifestyle where they take certain risks or they think that, you know, the linear safe way is what you should do when you feel like you know better for you. Like obviously taking all that into account and of course all of our experiences are not the same. Some of them might be very similar. Not all of them are the same and we all acknowledge that like this is not like a you know, let's sit here and complain about parents and elderlies 101. I, I've always said this, if you're not a freaking audience, I feel like a lot of times people that are teens and people that are just, you know, young adults, they take any piece of advice that comes from their parents, that comes from any elder in the community, and they just garbage it or they instantly play like this whole victim mentality trope towards it where they're kind of like, oh my god, this person's attacking me when they've given you good, genuine Islamic advice. And I think that a lot of young adults don't actually understand that. Like you could be at the mosque and a nice little old lady could give you some nice little advice that you were meant to hear that is good for you to hear. And instead of respectfully taking that advice and saying thank you, you want to start throwing Lord knows what around and it's a severe problem i feel like we're like even on social media you see like young adults making you know videos talking about oh so and so and i hate how my parents tell me to do this or i hate how they're like doing this and like a lot of times they'll like, actually good islamic advice and they will bash it and say keep it to yourself and that is not something you should do like always when you receive advice you should accept it be open to it because none of us are perfect and especially when it comes from somebody older i think that it is the utmost you know, do with the utmost respect and be respectful in it and just take that advice because a lot of times young adults want to get really fiery and get all up in there and start, you know, starting this whole drama for nothing when a lot of times Islamically the advice is correct. And of course, some people, when they convey the advice, they're not nice about the way that they convey it. Obviously, that's a whole other thing. But make sure you focus on the message and make sure you understand your boundaries, their pers that person's boundaries. And make sure you're just a respectful person as a whole, regardless of how people are treating you. So, of course. Now, to talk about the real stuff that I want to talk about. So, of course, I think for all of us, we can collectively say, that, like, if your parents have ever immigrated and they live wherever they live now to give you a better life like you feel like you can never pay them back for that because it was such a blessing to live comfortably today and to do all the things that you do today but one of the things that i want to help and just kind of talk about with some someone hopefully who needs to hear this that i hope can help someone i feel like i've noticed this in girls a lot especially but generally just speaking i think that a lot of times when you are children of immigrant parents and you know you just have immigrant parents or whatever in the third you tend to make a lot of the decisions in your life based off of what will make your parents happy because they made this big sacrifice for you rightfully so we all do it and we see this a lot in um opportunities marriages careers we see it a lot where you kind of be like okay like i'll just do this for my parents i'll just do this for my parents to make my parents happy etc 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 
Especially, I see this in careers where people will go on and pursue a big whole education because that's what their parents came for. Their parents came for them to get this big whole education, to live a better life, to have a better foundation, to just be well off. And then it's they feel like they kind of have to owe their parents this and they are kind of like indebted to them that they have to get this done for them. And I think that the bigger thing also that I feel like a lot of young adults probably are now hitting the realization of is that sometimes, again, with all love, we love our immigrant parents. We love our parents, period. We love our parents, of course. I think that sometimes when you have immigrant parents who left everything behind for you, you struggle with decision making, which is something that I feel like I'm learning more about now that I'm older. And I'm not saying this is necessarily about me, just when I'm dealing with other people and just life as a whole. Like, I've really been thinking about this, and I think that, like, we don't realize it, but we actually struggle deeply with decision making because a lot of the decisions that we make in life are either to make our parents happy, to marry the person our parents want, to be in the career that our parents want, to do and live our lives in the way that our parents want, to become this dream daughter, dream son, dream whatever in the way that your parents want because your parents, since they have made such a big sacrifice, they have this ideal mindset, this framework this mold of how they want their children to be and if you don't fit into that mold you are just not that ideal kid anymore that doesn't mean you're not a good kid that doesn't mean you're not a good person that doesn't mean you're not a good muslim but a lot of times if you do not fit in that ideal mold that they came with when they first immigrated here when they had the expectations of what they thought you would be like and how they thought you would live your life if you are not living into that mold it is like you living outside of obviously that mold but also a perception that they created of you and for most parents more often than not it is incredibly difficult for them to imagine and understand that their kids are their own human beings it's very difficult to detach from that idea because a lot of times parents are like, well, we love you, we care for you, we want to support you, we love you, we want to support your dreams and that's amazing and of course we love that but a lot of times that love and that care and it's obviously out of love and care and protectiveness and care and it's a lot of times it can harm your children in a negative way where they will start to feel like you want you love me and you care for me as long as i'm obedient to you and in that mold and obedience to your parents is something that i preach on the top of my lungs islamically especially and obedience does not mean that you go and do the haram and the stuff that they're saying nobody's saying that but respecting your parents, listening to what they say, you know, whatever the third might be, being just a good, respectful child to them, listening to what they say, being there, helping them, especially if they're old, taking care of them like that. I'm very big on that. And I can tell you that a lot of times in my life, um, my mom, she always say the thing to me. She was like, life really changes when, you know, like you as children learn to recognize that like taking care of your parents is not something that you just do just to do like islamically there's so much reward for it and i at first i was like mom like mm -mm. and then like as i grew up and then i started really practicing and realizing that like my life changed right and nobody's saying again that obedience and listening to your parents and whatever and third and by obedience we do not mean like in that negative connotation moreover just listening and being there and taking care of them and being a good child again that can be outside of the mold that they have for you but just being there and taking care of them so Support and whatever and third um a lot of times of course islamically it's great because your parents respecting them loving them is so incredibly valued in islam but more often than not you'll see your own life change and i do stand by that but i think that a lot of times when you can be a good respectful obedient good child like you can be all those things you can be successful you can be good but you're not that mold it's kind of like it, it means nothing. And I think that what happens is so many times, more often than not, if you are somebody who has fallen out of that mold that they have made for you, or you're out of it completely, or you deep down know you're going to make a decision that's going to take you out of that mold, more often than not, you tend to backfire and run away from those decisions, run away from those opportunities, run away from those careers, run away from those people, run away from anything and everything that you think will take you out of that mold, even if it is not wrong Islamically. And this mold that your parents have of you can be very damaging because it can actually limit your capabilities of being who you truly should be and can be. That mold does not mean that this is the end of your world. That does not mean that if you are something outside of that, you're not a good person. You can be a great person. You could be a great Muslim. You could be a great, wherever it might be, you can be successful in your careers. You can be successful in marriage. You can be successful in everything. But if it is not accordance to that original mold that they kind of had in their mind when they 
we're making those sacrifices and when they were raising you and they thought this is how my kid's going to be like then it becomes a little bit hard for your parents to ever accuse them and look at you the same because they constantly think that you betrayed them or you did something to let down their trust or you did something and etc and the third like, you don't value them oh my god you don't value them and it's like where did the discussion of value come and i think that a lot of times when this happens it's because parents tend to get too deeply attached to their children and it's beautiful of course and it's a way of love and care but we forget that these are their own human beings right more often than not a lot of children that want to live into that mold and just want their parents to be proud of them forever tend to also forget that you're a human being and you have a right and the responsibility and you deserve to live your life you do nobody's saying that you have to go do haram stuff and whatever in the third obviously take that out of context just saying that right now nobody's saying about that just generally saying like you decide that you don't want to get the career that they want you to do you, you decide you don't want to marry the person they want you to marry like it's like those things instantly just take you out of their mold because they're like oh we didn't expect this from you da, 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 in the third but it's kind of like that you are your own human being you are a whole person you are a whole human being and I know that a lot of times when we have parents that put like these expectations of this ideal image of you, this ideal mold of you, it hard, it's hard to imagine yourself as a whole individual being. But Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala is going to question you and hold you accountable for you. And that's something that I like to think a lot about. I know quite a few people in my own life personally that got into some situations, marriages, careers, etc., etc., for their parents and ultimately it led them to a path of committing a lot of wrong because it wasn't where they wanted to be and they're like well my parents pu push me here my parents push me here my parents push me here yeah but you're still a whole human being with you know your rationale and your intellect and whatever and on the day of judgment of course everybody's going to be responsible for their own end and that includes you we cannot throw the blame on just somebody else wholeheartedly and completely because we are also responsible for our own decision making but decision making becomes so hard for a lot of children because they can't imagine making a decision that they know is good but isn't validated by their parents because then it feels like it's always going to go through or you feel like it's always going to fail which is another big problem that's very niche i know a lot of people probably know deep down if you are especially like pakistani moms say this all the time bro I bet other people's moms say it as well, where it's kind of like you go against what they say. It doesn't have to be wrong Islamically. Like you make your own decision that's right for you. And like internally, you always have this fear that it's going to fail or that you're, it's going to get messed up because it's not the way your parents want it. And I think that one of the things that I really like to ask and I just I want I feel like people should ask themselves as well is when you are about to chase your dream chase this dream life tra chase whatever you want and it's a decision that you want to make and your parents don't agree with it and you feel like you're starting to back out or you're like kind of creating excuses because a lot of times we do make excuses we're kind of like oh you know um it's hard anyway i'm not sure anyway oh there's risk anyway i'm not too 100 percent about this anyway i'll just go do what my mom said i'll just go do what my dad said right we do that sometimes and we're kind of like mm, 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 you know and we like make excuses in actuality i want you to sit down with yourself and ask yourself if your parents supported this decision would you do it and a lot of times you'll find your answer to be yes you'll find out that if your parents supported some of the things that you wanted to do you would do them wholeheartedly passionately and you would do it just full force instantly but since they don't you tend to find excuses and reasonings and like it's like these excuses i don't know what else excuses to not go through with things because it's more comforting to you to say yeah 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 this is my excuse as to why i'm not going through this decision because it makes you feel like you have a sense of control and authority on your own life when in actuality the back reasoning in the back of your mind the root reasoning at the problem at the root of everything is because your parents don't support it and so when young adults especially grow with this mindset of constantly needing their parents' validation on what i wear what i do how i act who do i who am i friends with where do i go to school who do i marry you know what career do i have it's like you need their step-by-step -step validation because you feel like that's how you become successful you forget to live for you now you're like you know 30 years down the line you have your kids you have a home you have a family you have your wife and it's, it's some some things just feel off and I, this is gonna sound like a nightmare to some people may not protect us but it just feels off you look at your spouse and your spouse is they're a good person but it's not like what you had in mind it's not maybe the person that you wanted to be with or you had 
you have this person it's like they're cool you have kids with them so you're just kind of like yeah like they're a good person but my mom wanted me to be with you which is like i talked about this a lot before where it's like you do not want to put some innocent person caged to you because you cannot get yourself to marry the person you want to marry or things don't work out like it's not someone else's responsibility to pick up your broken pieces because you loved somebody else like don't trap somebody else don't ruin somebody else's life who wants to you know be fully immersed in like a brand new relationship where it's just all about you and them and you still have someone else in your heart and mind it's not fair not fair to you not fair to the person not fair to you because you're forever going to feel like you're caged you're just gonna put up with that person that person's forever gonna feel like they're unworthy and not good it's it's a recipe for disaster but this i do know a lot of people like this where again like you look at your spouse you look at your home you look at your career you look at your kids and it's like you are grateful alhamdulillah that you have all these things that god allowed you to see these things but none of these things feel like your things they feel like that mold that your parents had in mind things it feels like that dream child that they thought would be like the dream child the happy child's things that doesn't feel like your things and even when some kids do live up to their parents is like dream version of them and they go through all of it they do everything at the end of the night they sit there they're like but this doesn't feel filling fulfilling because none of those decisions were yours your entire life you drove your life making your decisions by what makes them happy that when they are gone or when they are not around anymore you feel a sense of no control in your life because you don't know where to go to finalize your decisions your decisions start begin in the middle end everything this whole segment of making a decision when you start you want to make a decision in the middle of making that decision and when you decide you want to make the decision all of these things are finalized and gone through by Allah no one else of course you can take your parents advice of course you can do those things more often than not sometimes some parents will tell you to do things that are haram and you will not consult Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala about it and you'll go through with it that's not good the decision that you make should always have Allah in mind Allah in the scenario because you're going to regret those decisions more often than not if they are not islamically correct but if anything a lot of times if you feel like you're just making these decisions and you're just kind of doing it to do it you're going to wake up one day and you're like i am grateful but why am i not happy then sometimes you start to think to yourself am i a bad person is god not happy with me do i not have good faith if it's god upset with me why am i so ungrateful sometimes you start to think you're ungrateful why am i so ungrateful i have a good career i have a husband i have a wife i have children i have a home i have a car i have everything that i thought i'm i'm praying i'm doing everything like you have everything yet seemingly it feels like you have nothing because none of those decisions had you in them it had your parents in them and i understand that for some people like this is hard hitting but it is something that you kind of have to ask yourself early and it's never too late really even now and asking yourself that question truly like would i pursue this if my parents were in support of it really tells you a lot about you because a lot of times when we think i want to become this person i want to go pursue a career in this your parents say no you start to make excuses oh you know what i don't want to do a career in that anyway it's too long anyway uh the salary's not that great anyway i don't think that i can travel out of state for it anyway i don't know if i like the school anyway like you just kind of start bringing up secondary excuses which you probably wouldn't have paid attention to primarily if your parents agreed in the first place you would have been like oh it's okay my parents agree i agree i love this i'm going to go for this so ask yourself if your parents agreed would you do it and a lot of times the answer is yes you would and so a lot of times when you're making those excuses it's more often than not to make yourself feel better, better feel better about the fact that you're not doing something that you want to do and it's just it's more of a comforting thought if anything that comforting thought i can tell you for a fact as somebody who's been there done that that comforting thought doesn't last you long because a lot of times you end up feeling more regret that you never lived for you because your entire life seems to be dedicated to somebody else and in a way it's kind of like traumatic because you do not know exactly who you are and what decisions you would make if it was you you don't know what your life would be like if you chose that career that you truly wanted to chase that you truly wanted to do if your parents didn't like tell you no don't do it you truly don't know what your marriage would have been like if you actually married that person that you wanted to marry and didn't force yourself to marry whoever your parents said you can't truly imagine how amazing your life could have been like if you were living in the state that you wanted to live in with the person you want to live with and just the home and the life that you have right now if it was the way that you decided it and that starts to make you feel like on a downward spiral 
than what happens when you have kids. A lot of times you want to live your dreams out through them. You want them to do these things. You want them to live their life the type of way. You want them to go to this state, to go to this education, to go to this career, to become this thing, to marry this type of girl, to marry somebody from this ethnicity, whatever it might be, to be a type of way, then you start to create a mold too. And that is how it all begins. Because when we do not give human beings the space to be human beings, to be rational, smart, and intellectual, to make the decisions that they are 100% capable of making, we limit our own selves, we limit our own generations to come, we limit our children. Because we believe that the next person, the person that came before me, knows better than I will ever know. So I am in no position to ever make a decision for myself. Because the decision that somebody else will make for me will always be better than the decision that I can make for myself. And there's no accountability in this situation. None. Because when all things fall through, the first blame you're going to point at is to your parents. I know somebody, quite a few people actually, this is not like a private matter. This is quite public. Everybody around me knows about this. This is really public and I bet you all have heard about this as well on social media. I know quite a few girls that are like, okay, so I'm going to marry whoever my parents say that they want me to marry. But only because if things fall through or things go wrong, I can point the blame to my parents. Because then if I married whoever I wanted to marry and things fell through, I would have to hold all the accountability because my parents would get mad at me for it. In actuality, in both cases, you have accountability. The first one being that you probably shouldn't throw yourself in a situation that you aren't ready for, that you don't want to pursue. And if you are in it, make sure you're doing properly what should be done. Not to mention, coming back to my original point, you are a whole grown human being. You are responsible for making your own decisions. You are. And as much as you might think that, no, 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 my parents know better, I guarantee that our parents do know better. No one is knocking that. Like I mentioned in the beginning, we aren't knocking that advice that they give. It's about coming to a point where you can rationally understand your desires, your wants, and what you think is best and compare it to what they're saying. It also comes to a point of understanding what you feel like is good for you, really. Because more often than not, my mom, she always says this thing. My mom, she always says this and it's low key, like, wow. She's like, a lot of times when children make decisions on their own, they hold more accountability for it because they made those decisions. But a lot of times when parents force their kids to do something, the kids use that as a free way to cop out and do nothing and blame their parents. And while it shouldn't be this way, because in both situations, there should be a sense of accountability, it is this way. Because it is more easier for everyone to throw the blame and play hot potato than it is for somebody to step up and be like, okay, I'm going to make this decision. If it falls through, okay, alhamdulillah. If it goes through, okay, alhamdulillah. Like, God knows what he's doing. It's okay. It's it's so, and I feel like a lot of this, let's get let's get real. Let's dig a little bit deeper. I feel like a lot of this is all rooting because we're not keeping good tawakkul in Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. I'm sorry, I, that's just how I feel and see some of these things. It's because we're not keeping good tawakkul in Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. We're keeping patience and, you know, we're keeping all this in the third. We're keeping this deep type of trust in our parents. We're like, oh, our parents, they're infallible. They won't make the mistake. And if, if anything goes wrong, I can just blame them. No, all of this starts because we don't have tawakkul. And because we don't have tawakkal, a lot of times we don't feel confident in our decision making. When you make a decision and you consult Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala about it, Allah guides you that this seems right, this seems like a good thing to do, then keep tawakkal and keep going. Because in life, if you sit here with the fear that this thing is going to go wrong, or imagine if I end up with somebody like this, or imagine if I career like this, or imagine if this happens to me, imagine if I get married to a cheater, imagine if I get divorced, imagine if this happens. When we sit there and we really dwell on those thoughts, we are truly just investing our energy towards that way and it's not something you want to do and if anything because of our fears we run back to the decisions and to choices that feel the most comfortable even if they don't make us happy and a lot of times that is what our parents told us to do whatever our parents said to be whatever our parents said to marry whatever it might be we run back to those things because it makes you feel a sense of comfort your real comfort lies in keeping tawakkal to Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala that's where it really lies in realizing that God will do it better for you than anyone else can. Stop fearing that you might end up in a career where you're not happy or that things are not going to work out or that you're going to end up in a situation where you won't, you know, be successful. Stop that. You are making so many decisions of your life based off of fear. And I know that I'm like 
guilty of charge is some things in my life where I like was like kind of like oh I'm so I have a fear that like what if I pursue this or I do this and things fall through and so I started changing my decisions and changing like my dreams and whatever out of fear no don't change your dreams and what you want to do and who you want to be and who you want to marry and just don't change these things out of fear God is greater than your fears okay God is greater than your fears God is greater than anything there is no reason for you to fear your fears so much that it is something you indirectly start to worship and listen to. Because as much as you don't want to admit it, that is what most people do. We start to worship our fears. And I, I always say this, I always say this, if you want to fear about something, I can get, I can tell you right now, I can give you two things that can branch out in ways that can lead you to fearing about a thousand things. When we talk about fear, there is a bajillion things to fear about in life. But when you just fear Allah and leave everything to Allah, things get better. Because you know that where God guides you, He provides. Where God takes you, He helps. Wherever God is guiding you to do, to pursue, God will be there to help. But if you are doing things because you trust your parents' decision-making more than you trust God's decision-making, or you feel like, you know, they're so infallible, you're just going to go with the flow and do haram, come on, don't set yourself up. This all comes back to keeping that deep tawakkal in Allah. They might have a mold for you. They might. But also remember that you have a qadr and a life that was meant for you. That is meant for you to live. Because you are a whole human being. A whole person. I know that you live with them. I know that that might be your parents. You might visit them. They might be there. They, whatever. They raised you. Yes. Nobody's denying those things. But on the day of judgment, it's going to be about you. And you're going to have to stand in front of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. Nobody else. And that's something that I remind myself a lot when I start to make decisions that are wavy or like choppy for the sake of other people. I'm going to have to answer about why I did what I did. And if I can't answer right now, what answer am I going to give then? And this isn't meant to be like, you know, to install fear. It's just something to rationally think about. It all starts off with having deep tawakkal. You are going to make a lot of decisions in your life that are going to have risks. Almost all decisions in life have risks. There's a risk in pursuing a certain career, a risk in getting an education, a risk in even going to college. People say that there's a risk in not going to college. There is a risk in going to college too. You're spending so much money on an education, you don't even know if you're going to come out and like it or bear with it. There's a risk in not going to college. What if you feel like, you know, maybe that was the best route for you certain years down the line. Now you regret not going. There is a certain risk in getting married with anybody. This is something that I tell like everybody in my DMs, especially where people have like these fears. There is a risk with getting married to anybody. A lot of times we think that the person that our parents found, you know, somebody from back home, wherever it might be, is like the safe option because our parents found them. That person, hello, Alam, I'm not saying this. I'm just putting this to retrospect, just saying that person can be your fear in a human being, but you're just overlooking it. You're overlooking any red flag. You're overlooking anything. You're like, oh, my parents brought this person forth. You're scared of marrying somebody you want because you're like, oh, what if they're a cheater? What if they're disloyal? What if this happens? What if this happens? Babes, what if you marry that man from back home and he's like that too? Now you're fearing both ends. You're like, bro, I should just not get married. Nobody's saying that. But what I'm saying is keep the wakal. Because no matter where you go back home here or wherever, no matter what career you choose, whether it's here, you want to go to a different state or wherever it might be, no matter what education you decide to get or you don't get, every single decision starts with faith. And it ends with faith and it goes in between with faith and sabr. You are going to need it the whole way. You cannot paralyze your capabilities and you and your dreams because it is convenient to other people. Nobody is saying to rebel against your parents, to do haram and to do those things. What I'm trying to teach you and tell you here is to keep more faith in God and also understand that accountability plays a role. Because on the day of judgment, the decisions that we are making to make or the things that we are pursuing for our parents that lead us to more haram, we are going to have to answer for them respectfully. And I understand that we look at this grand scheme, come back to the big thing. Well, they left their home country for me. They immigrated for me to have a better life. They did. And they probably want you to have good ahirat too. So wise up. Be a little bit wise. Again, not telling you to rebel against your parents or nothing. I do not support that. I think that you should definitely listen to your parents. Take what they say in account. Be respectful. Be loving. You know, your parents is one of the most valuable relationships you'll have in your life. But also understand that you are a human being. And 
Just like in every relationship, in every career, in every decision, in anything, there is going to be fear. There is going to be some scares. There is going to be some risks. There is going to be some regrets. But when you keep God by your side and you have faith that where you're going is going to be okay, things get better. Stop thinking that just because my parents pick this, it is infallible, it's never going to mess up, it's always going to be okay. Stop thinking that just because my parents said to do haram, I will do haram because I won't have to bear that burden. Everybody will have to bear their burden. Everybody. So, be a little bit wise and I understand that it's very hard to hear those things or to feel like you're a disappointment to your family because you didn't live up to that mold. But remember that on in the Ahirat, it's the whole of the story. That the wakkal that drives and you having those pure good intentions. To, you don't want to hurt your parents. Nobody does. You don't want to hurt your parents. You don't want to disappoint your parents. But you just truly want to make the decision that seems right for you Islamically. Inshallah, God knows best. Anyway, y'all, this episode was so short. But if you guys like this episode, let me know. And I, can, I have a lot of other things I can talk about in regards to this. But I just feel like this is such a scary topic because it's it's like defrosting close to home, aren't we? It's a little too close. But if y'all are into it, let me know. Um, it is so cold here when I'm recording this. I don't know why. When I'm recording this, I don't know what it'll be by the time I upload this. But literally like two days ago, y'all, it was like 80s. Like it was like in the 80s. And, like, we had fans on. It was so hot. And then, like, now it's, like, freezing cold. And I took a shower and I'm freezing. So we're cutting this episode short because, in actuality, Hera wants to go and be... Hera wants to go in her cocoon of blankets, okay? And I'm going to edit this in my cocoon of blankets. Anyway, let me know, y'all, if you like this episode. Take care of yourself. Have a great rest of your day. Assalamualaikum.